Testing, test, test. Is that pickleball? Yeah, pickleball. Great. Is that the middle plane of the middle? Three of them. Black bag. And then like a four, four yeah, square four volleyball or something? Go over what's come out of our office. Right. Yeah, I will say conceptually, it's really cool. I like the idea. Watch the property line though. Oh, yeah, that's who put the railroad. Yeah, we don't want to
Hi, Dana. Hey, Hello. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? This is Brandon Melton. Even though, e even though it says Matt Flynn, it's Brandon Melton, but Matt's here too. <laughs> Sorry, I'm having trouble with my technology. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> we'll, we'll work through it. We have so far. So can I see the rest of you guys? Let's see. How do I do this? Uh, no one, you're the first one here. Okay. I don't have my camera going. I just have my screen shared. Oh, oh okay. Got it. Yeah. But you should be able to hear the petitioners. Um, if at any time it, it, there's a, a lull and it doesn't seem like there should be a speak up so that I make sure that all the, the right microphones are open, um, so that you guys can, can hear the petitioners. So they'll be talking at the um, at the podium, but I have to make sure that that mic's unmuted. So are the petitioners all going to be in, in person? They're, yeah, I believe most of them are in person. I don't think we had any. Laura, do you remember if any petitioners said that they would be attending virtually? Okay, so yeah, all the petitioners are here. And how about board members? Any board members? No board members in chambers either. Okay. All right. Well, I guess we'll just wait for everybody to sign in. Do we know, um, did we have a quorum response? Yes. All right, well, we have a few minutes, so I guess we'll just hang tight. Great, sounds good, thanks. Someone's got a train.
Okay, guys, I'm only seeing three other board members on the call. Yeah, that's correct right now. So we're still waiting for a couple. What do we need, six? Yeah, it's six. All right, looks like we have six. Um, hopefully everybody can hear me. I'm going to go ahead and call this meeting to order. Hey, Dana, I still yeah. only, I only see five still. Counting me. In, yeah, including you. Oh, I see six. Oh, on okay. I see Tegan. Well, you're you're seeing it before then, I am. Let's... Oh, now I oh. I'm dropped. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I guess we'll have to do a roll call so we know who all these people are. <laughs> yeah, it looks like we're getting some names filled in. Um, okay. Are, okay. I'm, okay I'm, to, I'm, I'm seeing, I'm seeing six now. We All can, right. We can Great. go ahead and do a, a, Matt, do you want to do a roll call real quick? Just because we're close on the quorum six. Do you want to, you can do it. I don't have the sheet oh. of commissioners. Uh-oh. <laughs> It'll be a test. All right. Okay, I'll try. Okay. You can just press talk on there and you can... Okay, Dana, Matt, if you want to call the meeting to order, Matt will do a quick roll call. Actually, why don't you sit up on the other side of the table? Okay, thank you. Okay, can you, can you hear me? Oh. There, can you hear me? Okay, I'm going to try and do the roll call by uh, memory. Back up a little uh, bit. They're sensitive. So 11 people. So Wilkinson. Present. Lundgren. Uh, Rashid. Who is actually here in the uh, building. Uh, Trees. Here. Uh, Powell. Uh, I think he, okay. he was sure. excused. Uh, Slobojan. Hey, Matt. Yes. Your speaker is really, it's, your speaker is really garbled. I can hardly understand. Okay, you. maybe I'm, am I too, is this better? Much better, yes. yeah. Uh, ba uh, Bass. Yep. Um, did I say Warden? Here. Uh, Kavapal. Here. And let's see. One, oh, one, uh, one, uh, Salter. Here. Is there anybody we I missed that we uh, that I didn't call? Did you get me, Matt? This is Greg. Uh, yeah, I think I tried earlier. You must have just uh, chimed in, Greg. Yeah, okay. 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 We have a quorum. We all set. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody, for um, dialing in or calling in, or if you're there in person, thanks for that, too. Hopefully, next time we will all be able to be together. Um, the first order of business is to approve the minutes of the last meeting. Uh, can I 
First of all, I think there is a an, an edit on that. Um, the last sentence says next meeting 6-22-20. No, this is the third Monday of December. Okay, that that's I one. That's one of those holdovers on our in our system, and I try I try to get rid of it permanently, and then sometimes I catch it, and sometimes I don't. So we will remove that. All right. Are there any other additions or corrections to the minutes? All in favor of approving the minutes, please say aye. 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 Opposed. And it's our proof. Sorry, I guess I should have asked for a motion, but I didn't. <laughs> if he has any objections, they can speak now. Um, okay, the first, the first, what happened to my agenda here? I need four screens. Okay, is there any old business that we need to talk about? New business. Case DR 20 12 request for design review CD downtown zoning district 217 Brady Street new windows Andrew Wold petitioner. And um, Andrew is not with us. We can come back to this if he uh, shows up or he can uh, move forward without him, but it's entirely up to the board. Well, don't we need to have somebody representing them to be able to discuss this? Well, as chair, I think that's your call, but that's typically how um, how things happen. Yeah, I think we'll table that until we have a petitioner um, present. Is any, does anybody have any objections to that? I know. So that also is the next case. Um, DR 20-13 is also Andrew Wold. Yeah, actually, so, again, as and Andrew is not here, however, uh, Jim Thompson, the building owner, is here. I, I understand things are kind of in flux and that, um, Jim, do you mind going up and... Uh, you can, actually, the microphone is omnidirectional above you, so if you just uh, sit at the table, you should be able to be heard. I am no longer the building owner, actually. Andrew Wold is. Yeah. Uh, hi, Dana. Hi, Greg. Hi, Jim. Uh, hi, Jim. Uh, uh, I have with me my partner, Amber Haynes, and we are putting in a non-alcohol bar in the lower level of that building that we've called the Berg Building since 1995. We, we did send our, and what, what we are here for today is to get approval for a simple sign that comes out the diagonal. Uh, and we thought we had sent it through our landlord and I don't know that he got it here in the correct format. And I apologize that we didn't follow up to make sure that happened. Uh, I don't know if that's something you can trust us on. It's, it's, modeled after the yeah, urban farmhouse sign email. so if, yeah go one more that and where that where they were where he was proposing to put an awning is exactly where we're planning to put this sign if you remember what the urban farmhouse sign looks like it's a simple black metal structure that comes okay. out Google. with our, and our logo will be on both sides so we don't actually have the information on the sign? Yet. I, don't, I don't think so. Sorry. Uh, this is Matt. We had, um, I had been off for uh, a few days and uh, today I saw coming through our, kind of our permit porthole, which is not typically how DRB applications are filed, um, an application for a can sign or canopy permit. Uh, however, the for this building. However, the the image that was attached showing the sign was hardly legible and showed no graphics on it. So uh, I needed to follow up on really quite honestly, not even knowing what, what I had received and then came to the realization just a few minutes before the meeting that 
uh, plans were for changing for this project. Okay. Uh, so, because there's no information in the um, in the agenda for this, doesn't this also fall under the 24-hour rule of the open meeting law that we have to have this published before we can talk about it? I think to be safe, that that's true. Granted, the address is is on the uh, uh, agenda, but it clearly says it's for new awnings. Welcome, Andrew. Oh. How are you? Andrew Wool oh, just Andrew Wool just came in. The information that we thought we had sent to you was disconnected. No, it was kind of fuzzy. They said it was a little bit fuzzy and like distorted. Well, what's the, the pictures? Um, okay, we were. Our plan, by the way, is to have the uh, the whole inside completed by. Uh, the end of the uh, end of June to do some uh, soft openings. Uh, Amber has planned a uh, martini shake-off where we'll bring in local bartenders oh. and have them make non-alcohol drinks, etc. So, uh, uh, this is Jim. Yes. yes. Uh, are you? I, I'm sorry. Are you talking to us? Or are you talking to? It's hard to know who's talking to who. I, I apologize. I'm trying to talk to, to, the, to the committee. Uh, and so we were hoping to have our sign up because we we're planning to open uh, July 15th. But if we can't do that, we'll, we'll open without it and, and do this properly and by the next meeting. Well, so we, we do have... Um, it sounds like the potential for uh, a special meeting. I had wanted to talk to the board about this a little bit later in the agenda because there is another request for that didn't get in um, timely into this meeting. So, do you all mind if we have this conversation right now? <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. We'll we apologize. These days, you're never sure who's where and what and when. So I, I, I apologize for taking up this meeting time for you. It, it's okay. It's, um, I mean, we're, we operate fairly informally anyway, Jim, but unfortunately, because it's not on the agenda and there's some pretty strict rules about open meeting law, we just can't talk about it until we have more information. Understood. But Understood. we'll... We don't want you to delay your opening either. I think we will all tr want to try and be as accommodating as possible. So if we can work out another meeting time, we've got several others on the agenda for tonight anyway. Um, maybe we can try to get that done. I don't know how much time it takes you to get your sign made. This, this is Matt. I'll just throw out that, you know, uh, it's not uncommon for businesses to open before their signs are fabricated. And you can do temporary grand opening signage. Uh, you can do a sandwich board. Uh, there are some temporary short-term options that might be uh, uh, acceptable. Okay. Thank you. We'll let you know, Jim. Thank you. All right, um, where, where are we, Matt? <laughs> you know what, I'm sorry, I was a little late. Uh, the 317 Brady, um, did you guys skip over that one? Or did you guys have any? I just seen that on the top of the agenda there. That was... Is he talking to us? Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I, the board's not here, so yeah. yeah. Actually, oh, the ceiling. Andrew, if you wanted to move up to the... Oh, sure. You got it? Probably catch you a little bit. Yeah, no problem. So were you, Andrew, were you speaking with respect to the 240? I was. I 246? Know, I was. I didn't know if you guys already covered that or I didn't know if that was the order. I just, I just seen that out there. So. Matt, we can't hear him. Oh, just, I want you to sit in the middle and just. Oh, sure. Okay. Uh, yeah. I didn't know if you guys already talked about it yet. If you haven't, I'll let you guys continue and I'll, yeah. 
Dana, he's referring to 217 Brady DR 20-12. Uh, I believe that it was tabled um, since Mr. Wold wasn't here at the time. Okay, but all right. I, Thank you. So I, I'm gonna suggest not to, not to uh, inconvenience uh, Andrew too much, but uh, if we could get through the other items on the agenda, then I would suggest going back to 217. No problem. Okay, got it. 217 or 215? 2015. Is the 429 East 3rd Street there, Ruby's? Yeah, that that's the would be the next item on the agenda. What Rack, Matt was recommending that we return to DR 20-12 um, after the other cases are heard. Oh, I see. 2017 is the number. I was looking at the DR 20 yeah. number. Okay. Okay. Sorry. So the next case would be DR 20-15 that we would be considering. Let's go there. All right. <laughs> All right. Case number DR 20-15, request for design review CD, downtown zoning district patio improvement for 429 East 3rd Street, Ruby. Anybody there for representing Ruby? It doesn't appear that Sydney is here. Goodness. Okay, moving along. Case DR 20-17, request for design approval in CD Downtown Zoning District proposal for new 183 unit apartment building to be located at 500 McClair Street, Sam Rogers, DWG Development Petitioner. Uh, good evening, this is Sam Rogers with GWG. How are you this evening? We are good, how are you? I'm good, thank you. I also have uh, Billy Ponko and Mike Thomas who are who are also also a architect with GWG as well as uh, Brad Martell from the YMCA. Uh, so first and foremost, just wanna thank everybody for your time this evening. We're, uh, we're very excited about this uh, this, uh, this 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 project. Uh, this was actually the first uh, the, the, uh, the first site that I found in Iowa uh, three years ago when I work, went to work for TWG, and I've been in Brad's ear on it for three years, and we finally got something done, and, and so and so we're very excited to be here today. Um, I'm more than happy. To, I can actually I, I go more into the development if you'd like, or I can <clears throat> sorry, or I can answer questions. It's 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 a uh, answer so whatever you'd like me to do. Why don't you run through? Um, why don't you Tell us about the project and um, you know, just give us a little bit of information on your design and, and um, uh, anything that you think might be pertinent to our evaluation. Certainly, certainly. So, so, the, so, the, so, the, so the name of this development is the yard, obviously, uh, sort, of in a, sort of in a tribute to the, to the fact that this site, along with the YMCA site, was the first, was the first uh, rail yard, uh, yard, yard west of the Mississippi. Um, um, as it kind of said in the packet that we that we that we gave out, it's a 183 unit uh, development uh, with a combination of studios, studio one and two bedroom uh, units. Um, it's a four story wood frame building. Uh, the exterior will be uh, will be a combination of brick, brick fiber cement and metal. Uh, we'll have a surface parking boat both on site, but also also as part of the connectivity with the building, um, a shared parking agreement with the YMCA. Um, uh, the total cost of the project is just over, 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 over $28 million. Um, all the financing is ready to go. Uh, the, this is also, also going to be an opportunity zone project. So that's, uh, so that's, that's sort of uh, nice to see that, uh, see that, see that a program be, uh, put into use. Uh, TWG development is actually, um, um, done multiple opportunity zone projects. In fact, we closed the first one in at the state of Indiana um, as well. Uh, um, I see from a sorry uh, from a from an amenity space standpoint, I mean it's a, it's a it's a it's a pretty much of a robust amenity space from the standpoint that it'll have a fitness center as well as access to the Scott County YMCA. We were actually in process of talking to Brad and the YMCA about 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 uh, providing a uh, 
a membership for every unit in the actual development that's not finalized yet, but it's something we're talking about. Obviously, I'd have a community room, on-site lease and management office, uh, storage units in each apartment, a video security system, uh, an in-unit washer and dryers, uh, dog grooming stations, um, outside patio deck with a grilling area. Um, and so it's a pretty robust, uh, it's a pretty robust, robust market rate development. Um, uh, it's one of the other things about this project as well is it's also going to, uh, to, 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 to tap into to a workforce housing tax credits through the state. Uh, those have also been awarded. Um, uh, which means that, uh, which means that the project will also have, also have, have a 10% of the units will have rents that are, that are actually targeted at the 60% AMI level. Um, obviously from a connectivity standpoint, we, we have made, we have made, made a, uh, a, a big effort to try to connect not only with the, uh, not only with the YMCA as others our neighbor to the east, uh, but also, also uh, through the YMCA property in Federal Street, uh, also with the also with the uh, with the developments to the west of us, and then obviously as part of our development, we will be we will be repaving that little little area area of Leclerc Street to give us connectivity to both as businesses of the south, but also to Fourth Street as well. Uh, from a design standpoint, I can really turn it over to Billy and Mike's them. Um, uh, the, pro the project you see in some of the renderings uh, is very similar to a project we have under construction right now in Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. Sam mentioned it as the first opportunity zone uh, job in Indianapolis. Uh, it's a blend of fiber cement and metal panels. We are working with different massing and we, uh, a masonry base. Uh, each unit has a a good size uh, balcony. The end units or the corner units are larger, two bedrooms. Uh, since the project is very similar to the one, we've been able to walk the units and they have a really good feel inside. We put a lot of effort uh, into our interior design package to make sure it's on par with the industry, what we're seeing throughout the nation. Uh, resilient materials like luxury vinyl plank, uh, carpet in the bedrooms, uh, Sam mentioned the in-unit uh, laundry, uh, stainless steel appliances, uh, dark windows, play to the coloring pattern. Uh, and then we've been working with the same civil engineering group that the YMCA is using, IMEG, to uh, look at our stormwater runoff and uh, underground utilities. And we're in the process of coordinating that right now in the design. Can you talk a little bit about the, um, the site, the landscaping plan? One of our concerns I know with the Y, and I don't know that we've ever ever seen this come back to us, was the connection to 4th Street with a sidewalk of some sort. So it's, it's hard to see in the, that site plan. And you go up to the site plan and instead of the landscape plan, that'll show you. Okay. The right there, just off to the side, you can see what we're with the red on it. Doing there, yes. Yeah, you can see kind of on the right side, a kind of that's that's a cutaway to that the detail to bubble on the Fourth Street right there. So we have a boulevard there as you enter the site. Uh, get north of the existing buildings just off of Fourth Street. Then there's a sidewalk on the east side. That will be the primary walkway. We're proposing putting some parking along the west side of that entry boulevard where we were dri driving by this evening. Uh, and it's probably gonna take us correcting some of that paving in there. Uh, and there's a stormwater inlet that we'll have to work with IBEG on to make sure that the elevations are set correctly to handle any water. Uh, as you come north up that sidewalk, what is not well shown right now, and it's a comment that we're working on this design, is how you get from that sidewalk on the east side over to the building. That connectivity is missing right now on the plans, but we're, we've made that comment, and that's going to be in the next round of drawing. At the southeast corner of the project is our leasing and amenity area. So... They'll have visitor parking there, um, access with the sidewalks, and then there'll be a covered area kind of right there in the middle of the screen that's still being developed. Uh, that area that's being circled right now is the dumpster enclosure. So as you come out of the amenities at the southwest or southeast corner, 
The sidewalks will have a connectivity over across uh, that run to the sidewalk that runs north and south. As you can see, that area circled is the vehicular connection to the YMC, YMCA property. Uh, the sidewalk running along the east side of our property heads north past the YMCA parking lot, will then diverge to the east further and route over to the stairs and ramp access point that they've included in their design to connect to Federal Street. Along the way, you'll see, you'll see we'll have some water detention and water quality with natural grasses and landscapings that uh, address that area. Can you by any chance have a plan, uh, a site plan that shows the, the, the full site with the, the position of the Y? Yeah, we can put that in our construction package. We did, uh, Dana, this is Brad, we did connect 4th Street to the Y with a sidewalk that runs down past the early learning center for buses and that sort of thing. So we also connect to 4th Street. really help, but if everybody virtually, this doesn't really help. Right. There's our simple plan. I, was that Brad? Yeah. Yes. Sorry, Brad, it was a little hard to hear, but I think I heard you say that um, you guys do now have a sidewalk connecting forth to the Y. Yes, we do. It runs right out past the Early Learning Center and then goes to the east, right to the front door. And that's so if any staff or anybody, um, we can have bus, buses drop off people there. And, they, and if people want to go run down the Mississippi on the trail there, they can they have access now to four streets to the sidewalk. Okay, perfect. So the, the sidewalk, I don't know. Matt, are you able to point out that this area right here for the yeah, I can do that. people on the phone? Where, where do you want? The, this square right here. Would, okay. okay. Runs to the east to the your front the Y right front so, so the plans that were just given to me does show a uh, I'll say a linear sidewalk path that is protected by uh, medians but runs uh, pretty much in a straight shot towards the main entrance of the Y. And I believe the last set of Y plans I saw you have street lighting along that to dress that up all the way. Half the parking lot's already moved. Yeah. <laughs> it's already done. <laughs> What's that? It's, it's going so fast over there, Brad, I can't keep up. Yeah. Board members, do you, any of you have any questions? This is Matt again, and I, I don't have... Not, uh, I don't have the packet in front of me, but I just wanted to mention one more time, maybe to uh, Brad Martell's dismay, is that you may see a comment in there about continuing to look at connection, you know, vehicular connections to Federal Street. We don't think that that's really a possibility, and that is not a condition that we want to impose on uh, any approvals you give today. But our kind of our thought was now that. We have the Y project well under construction and starting to get a really good idea in terms of elevations uh, for this project. Let's take one more look at it, but again, not, uh, not incumbent upon any a recommendation on this project on its own. And uh, Matt, do you have any samples of mat actual material? No, if... Um, we talked about that, and um, what, or do you have anything? Okay, yeah, yeah, what, yeah, what you'll find in your packet is at the end would be uh, actual, not the physical materials, but it does uh, fully give the specifications for the materials uh, being proposed. Can you scroll through that? Brandon? This looks like it's the end of these elevations. Uh, that looks like the older version. It should be, I think it's at the very end of. 
that's that's okay. the end of this item. That's the next. No. Nope. The the materials that I think we there might have been confusion. We we sent in a revised yes. packet. Okay. Early last week or so. I apologize. I may not have included that, but again, our review is you know this is the very consistent with the quality materials used for the other uh, pending, uh, well, under construction and pending projects downtown. We're supportive of, of those materials. Matt, are you able to show, go back to maybe the first page, the renderings, and I can walk them through the materials based on the, the legend of materials that were included in the revised packet? Hey, Tyler, Blake, how are you doing? Matt, it's the same material going on the side of the YMCA. Cement board and uh, it's the same the material on the side of the YMCA. So the and I'm I'm going to be looking at this revised packet here, but the the dark color starting at the corner of the building is a cement a cement fiber fiber cement panel. Um, depending, we try to usually select the colors that come out of each manufacturer's. Uh, they have an application that can be pre-applied or painted on site. That's a decision a lot, of, a lot of times we work with depending on when the materials are going to be installed. Uh, then you have a similar fiber cement panel uh, to the uh, right of that that has vertical uh, one by two board and batten strips. And, of and that's, a, that's a similar panel. Adjacent to that, mm -hmm. to further to the right, is a white fiber cement panel. And that's detailed out with extruded aluminum strips that cover up the joints. And it sounds like that's what the uh, YMCA has. At the base of the building, at certain areas to help change up the material and texture is a dark veneer brick. It would be a full depth brick uh, with an airspace there for drainage. The red panels uh, are also a fiber cement that you see detailed out and then we're still looking at some applications if there's any metal panels used to accent some balcony edges or not we've we've success, successfully detailed the projects both ways uh, depending on the location and what local ordinances require for material percentages Thank you. I think that that explains very well, and the renderings, of course, certainly help. Okay, board members, anybody else have any questions? What about signage? <laughs> you have that figured out yet? We, it's kind of quiet. Yeah, <laughs> we haven't determined that yet. We, we've worked with a signage manufacturer in the Indianapolis area to put together some nice details for either uh, building blade signage, uh, ground-based monument sign, uh, channel lettering that is also building mounted. We just hadn't determined exactly what fit on this project yet. It's a little tricky uh, since it's set back from the road in the YMCA. The, that looking at the site boulevard, that would be an appropriate place for a, the monument, monument sign. Uh, it might be something that we consider elevating that monument sign, maybe adding two more feet to the base of it to give it a little bit more prominence and viewpoint since it is set back. Uh, but that would be something that either if you had an opinion on or we just have to develop with as we further lay out the details on the project. Well, I'll just say the downtown design guidelines don't prohibit monument signs. Actually, they're okay. they're uh, required pretty much uh, citywide. You can you can go up to twenty five feet in height for a monument sign. So um, well, I, I think a, we've got plenty of I leeway have an there. I example here we can provide you. Okay. Well, again, I, the board you can't, can't see, see it, see it but yeah. and they would like to see that uh, again. But it that's probably a matter that. Uh, you know, you'd be able to call in if okay. you wanted to. Yeah, we will we'll definitely want to review that. And I would um, 
not like to see a 25 foot high monument sign. <laughs> <laughs> <Nope. laughs> Just say. <saying. laughs> a 24 6 okay? <laughs> this, one of the models that we've used elsewhere, it's 48 inches tall. That sounds much more in scale. <laughs> I wasn't suggesting a 25 foot tall sign was right. I just saying what the limitations were. The door. <laughs> okay. Um, does anybody else have any questions? Did I forget to ask anything? Um, the railings, are the railings uh, on all these little balconies, I assume some sort of a aluminum or I'm, I'm guessing they're not wrought iron. No. They're aluminum, a powder coated aluminum or steel. Black. And, and then you, you've also got a plan for adequate screening on the roof for all the mechanical systems? The mechanical sits typically toward the center above the corridors. That helps carry that load down through the building and then avoid vibration above sleeping and living room spaces. Um, based on that, that also helps with our sight lines because it pushes it back further in. Uh, we have not done a sight line study yet at this point. Uh, being that it's a four story building, the last, the version we did of this most recently, I think you were two to 300 feet away before you would see any uh, mechanical equipment. Um, Federal is elevated about 15 feet higher than the YMCA property, so that would have a, a more in, impact on a sight line. Uh, there's very low parapets on this project for that reason, or just to avoid elevate further elevating the massive of the building. Based on the eyebrow kind of designs and details that come out at the corners, those overhangs, they just proportionally don't fit with a parapet. Is, is there a sight line requirement that the city has? I just, we just hadn't dug into that yet. We, we just require that mechanicals are screened from a zoning perspective, yeah. Is there a, a point from the building? Is it from the city street, the property line? I don't know off the top of my head. I'd have okay. to look, check yeah, the code. We've got a new zoning code and I don't think between the three or four of us can quote you what that is other than a screening requirement, but okay. I think there's some room for interpretation there. Obviously, we'd like to see it screened to the uh, degree possible. That's not a problem. We can ac we can accommodate that. That is common. Uh, it's just a, it helps. I think usually my follow up question is at what point, where do you measure that sight line from? So if if it's a, a community that we just put a project that was based on the property line. Now, if a building sits only 30 feet off a property line, no screening is necessary because you're kind of looking straight up. If we're starting from 4th Street, looking all the way down the boulevard, that would be a different issue and we can work with that. Yeah, our, our typical sight line study is five feet off the ground, 200 feet away. And so we'll, that's where your eye level is when you're 200 feet from the building. And if you're farther than that, chances are you can't tell it's mechanical equipment anyway. Um, so if there's something, I, I don't know if there's guidelines, we can read into the zoning code and, and see what that looks like, but we, we can accommodate that or even probably race in with the parapets if we need to in, in certain areas. Okay, then I just have one last question and it's on what materials are you planning to use for the dumpster enclosure? A split face masonry block or brick that would match the building. Uh, okay, gang. Anybody want to make a motion? Any questions? I would move to approve. Thank you, PJ. That's presented? Yes. Is there a second? I'll second. Thanks, Greg. Any further discussion? All right, 
I think the project looks great, you guys. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Great. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. This will be a great, a great project to fill in that space. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Okay. Everybody ready for the next one? <laughs> Case DR 20 14, request for design review at 601 West 2nd Street, CD Downtown Zoning District, renovation of existing building, IH Bowstring to multifamily residential units. Jonathan Karsten's petitioner. Yes, and I'm here. Yay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> You're up. All right. Well, let's, I, I guess first thing I can do is visual here. Go through the concept of the project. The owner of the uh, building's name is Bill, Bill Nielsen. He was the previous owner who had the flower shop that was in it for years and years and years. And they're at the position now where they want to renovate the empty building. This building was initially designed as an IH. Uh, truck service and sales center back a very, very long time ago in the 1800s. And we're going for state and federal uh, historical classification for this building. We have gotten our type two approval through the state of Iowa for that designation. And this renovation will be to convert it into 23 separate uh, apartment units and maintain and revitalize it to as close as possible to that original standing that that building was designed for. To do that, we are going to redo all of the aluminum storefront on the second and western street sides to match an old picture we found when it was originally an IH dealership. That involves changing it out so that it's all clear glass with one with thin mullions and uh, good sight lines through the whole building. Oh, sorry, wrong, wrong one. Got a couple things open here, apologize. <laughs> okay. And further on the Western Street side, they have a lot of old style uh, commercial shop windows that we are going to remove and move into the interior of the building and replace them with look alike modern material windows to improve thermal value and increase, increase efficiency. The goal of the project is to maintain the building as best as we can. Everything on the outside is gonna get tuck pointed to bring it back into shape. One of the best features of this building was when it was originally designed based on site conditions, this was designed to let in as much natural light as possible because electricity was much more scarce back then. And on the top of that uh, bowstring roofed area is a curb that existed from there that had a skylight on it long, long ago that we're going to replace. And that will be an atrium area that services all apartments in this area, in this building. To get the counts of uh, apartments that we needed, we also need to uh, bump up and add a level on top of the garage. The garage was an addition that was made in 1978. And we are going to add a new floor to that so that we can get six more units in that area. The idea for that is to try to have it disappear in the background because the real feature is the actual service center. But we have historical proof through a Sanborn map that there was a second floor on that garage at some point in its history. So it would not be a conflicting interest item. Also along the parking lot side, the state of Iowa Historical Society has asked that to get the patios on 
the exterior of that side, they'd like some screening. So we have proposed adding a brick screen with uh, vegetation in front to hide the patios for all the units that we propose on the inside. Each one of the units on the first floor of the renovation will have exterior access, both on the Western Street side and the parking lot side, making them true garden level apartments, an amenity that isn't readily available for a lot of apartments in the downtown area. We do this because we want it to be a pet friendly and person friendly unit so that you don't have to go walking through an entire space to be able to go walk the dog or get out and enjoy the weather. I think that should cover most of what we're trying to accomplish with this project. If you have any questions, please let me know. I enjoy talking about these. Nice looking project. I'm going to ask the same question about screening since I can see from this um, the elevation for the, the 3D view of the patio, it looks like I can see part of the roof. What's the plan for screening the mechanicals on this building? The large HVAC unit that you see there right now will be removed. All of those curbs are all hidden behind uh, the parapet wall. All HVAC units for the units themselves are all interior. Those AC units will be hidden via sight line behind the parapet wall and those curbs from, and it, like the second, the gentleman before me asked, the question would be how far away do you have to be before you see them? And this would be a significant portion, but if that portion, if we know that number, I can provide screening for all uh, air condensing units that would be on the roof. Okay, thank you. Uh, um, tell me a little bit about that that chimney or that stack, that smoke stack. Is that there now? That is existing. <laughs> it it does go that high. Wow. And it would be something with the historical designation that we would not be able to remove. Okay. We plan on possibly using that for signage. <laughs> <laughs> not a bad idea. That might, that might hit that 25 foot. Yeah. <laughs> the ordinance doesn't say that signage on a smokestack is allowed, so I, don't, I think we're going to have to decline it. I'm, I'm kidding. I think that sounds cool. Again, this is like a question. Go ahead. Um, just on the um, the portion that is the second floor, do you have um, a fire escape or, or something in your plan? And yes. what materials would you be using? There, there's an interior set of stairs. What's, ha what's actually happened since this uh, submission was made, that garage door that's on the alley side that you see on the drawing right now has had to be removed. That's where the escape stair is and it dumps t into the parking lot to the left of that of what you see on the screen and it's inside okay good thank you and the materials on that will be a fiber cement board similar to what the previous petitioner was mentioning Anybody else have any questions? I have a quick question. Did you say that the Did I understand correctly that you have received and passed all the state historical criteria? We have gotten to the part two portion of the state historical uh, society's okay. review, and they have approved the part two. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, George Rashid here had a question. I don't know if he's being picked up. Do you want to try? And I can repeat if need be. Will you have a, a, a limited amount of garages available for this? Yes, the garage stays as is. Okay. There will be 10 spots available in there, as well as the outdoor parking. Those garage spaces, the plan now is first come, first serve, whoever's yeah. <laughs> first to rent will get a chance at those. Not very many buildings with the downtown area are working ways to uh, 
Right. Okay. Uh, George was just commenting, there aren't many housing options downtown that offers uh, in, uh, indoor uh, parking spaces. So 10 indoor parking spaces and then uh, do you, what was the number of outdoor? Outdoor spaces. Okay. As well. Three. Twenty-three. Twenty-three. Well, again, that no parking, no off-street parking required in the downtown district, but there would be more than one per unit um, available here. Future hope would also be that Western Street could get in angled parking similar to what it has further down the street, but that's not necessary for this portion of the project. I remember there was a question about uh, refuse. Similar to the other petitioner, we will have a concrete block, a uh, split face concrete block, uh, dumpster enclosure towards the rear alley of the building with a concrete cap. Can you point that out where that will be located? On that site plan? Is it down here? Yep. Great. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions? Anybody want to make a motion? A motion to approve. Who's that? Who made the motion? I think there were two of us. Was that, was one. Was that Tegan? Yes. All right, there was a motion. Well, whoever, whoever tied for the first can be the second. <laughs> second. <laughs> and who was that? Danelle. Thank you. All right, any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Great looking project, you guys. Nicely done. Thank you. It'll be a great reuse of that building. It will. It's set empty for too long. Nice location, too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks so much. Thank you. This is most cases we've had in a long time. <laughs> Case DR 2016, request for design review, CD Zoning District 332 East 2nd Street for raised deck and exterior renovations. Jonathan Parsons on behalf of Great Revivalist Brewery. Hi again. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> All right, go ahead. The floor is yours. All right. This is probably a building most of you are familiar with. Great River has previously had this, uh, this building for many years and the flood did a wallop of a number on that, that building last year. And they've finally gotten funding and everything put together to do a, a quality re renovation to what, what's been there previously. The, the old plan had a non-ADA accessible bar and uh, very dated bathrooms that didn't meet code. So the plan of this renovation is to completely move the bar to a different section of the building that gives you ADA access, as well as completely gut and renovate the restroom facilities to bring everything up to code. And the big portion of it is to add a mezzanine level inside the structure that dumps out onto a brand new deck that spans between the two angled portions of the building. The nice part about this uh, deck is it gets you up high enough for, while you're looking to the north and east at the roller dams to be able to see everything. Whereas on the patio itself, you're down too low to be able to get the view that you're getting there. Big things in this project are the replacement of all of the existing windows with new aluminum storefront, as well as the deck renovation itself, and updating the entries 
to all of these spaces to be ADA accessible. Materials wise in this project, everything below four feet of elevation is going to be of washable, cleanable materials, basically flood proof, to make it so that it's capable of accepting what will most likely be another flood if it occurs. Other than that, well, that's not, uh, it's the realistic view is if it happens again, we need to be prepared. Absolutely. The materials, the, plan? the materials themselves are not going to change. The only updates are in the existing holes. So it will be concrete block below all painted to match what was there previously. This is Laura. I also wanted to ask the board for permission to work with the petitioner on if they do flood vents for this building as well as part of the flood prevention ordinance. What exactly does that mean? What, um, how does that impact the aesthetic? Well, so that it would have um, vents in the sides of the building it's one of the options that they're working on because uh, it, it needs to comply with the flood uh, del uh, damage prevention ordinance. And the way to do that in this case is to let the flood waters come in. Their philosophy is very much in line with that. This would just prevent pressure from on the exterior of the building. Um, they did receive a little bit of damage from the flood waters coming um, last summer. And so this would help relieve some of that pressure. Um, there, they have not provided information on what type of flood vent they would be looking at, but that is what their attorney has um, suggested that they'd move forward with. Yeah. But we don't have any develop. We don't have any details on that yet. Yeah, we're looking at the different. So it sounds like it would be similar to um, the lodge at Accredited Island. That's the same type of thing. Uh, yeah. yeah. Something along gotcha. that. The key is we want to find a way to make this comply with what we need it to comply with. Exactly. Um, so it looks like the existing awnings will not be replaced, right? No. They Looking have, at the, compared to the existing. They have the old brewery's name on it, so at, they would not be able to... Uh, <laughs> be there in their current capacity. The only thing that could happen is the change in name. The very first question. Is this, a, is this the same owner? He will still be their brewer. I don't believe he's the actual owner anymore. He's the building owner still right now. Um, but I know that he's not the business owner. From what I understand. Uh, yeah. Rich is the business owner. He's the building owner. Okay. Yeah. I am not 100% sure yeah, how that's Yeah, Paul Crutzfeld the Yeah, Paul Crutzfeld um in the application the one listed as Paul is is the building owner and then Rich is the business owner. And I wanted to draw your attention to um in order to do some ADA compliance with the with the exterior doors, they will be switching there's a that long skinny door um right there. Mm -hmm. It's a door right now and they're turning that into a window and then uh, to the right, which was a window, they're turning that into the ADA compliant door, double door. But it's within the same footprint of what the window was, just making it into a door. And then if you go further to the right, a little bit further, that, that was a, a garage door. They're blocking the bottom part to make it into the bar, right? Into a sit at bar from sit the outside. Bar. So it will be a, a window instead of the, the potential. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it'll basically be a garage door that lands on a bar top. Right, uh, so it'll be slightly, it will still have the illusion of a, of a garage door. Mm -hmm. And then on the Iowa side, Brandon, can you scroll down? Um, actually, maybe up, sorry. There is, um, there's going to, there's another garage door on the Iowa side. This side? This side. No, Iowa. 
right there. Yeah, I see it there. Um, that is, so there's a garage door there. They're turning that also into a window with a door on it for another ADA access point. And that will be to what will be the main bar area, whereas the old bar area is going to turn into just seating. Will the um, that patio be resurfaced? That, that was not in the plans to have that resurfaced. Right now, we were worried about the building, but we can look at it. Well, it's just, I mean, and, and maybe there's, there's obviously a big issue with that sidewalk, too. You've got a whole bunch of drive, driveway, curb cut things and other things that um, probably are going to detract from the appearance of the building just because of the way that if you go to the existing shot, yeah, that one. I know Second Street's on the docket to get a uh, street renovation. So some of that will probably be leaving when they get that done. Good. I'm not sure what um, the the street's on the docket. I don't believe it's on the docket okay. right now. Just a step. Of so it also looks like it looks like today is my day for mechanical rooftop systems. It looks like, um, again, to go to the existing shot, there's a whole lot of stuff that's up there. Is there any plan for doing anything with that? That's actually not mechanical. Right now, well, previously, they used that as a space to get bands up and play on the roof. Not an approved method of doing that. <laughs> One of the main reasons why we want a deck that's easily accessible. <laughs> and yes, that would so be that removed. White, that white to the left of the cobra head, cobra um, light pole, that's not a mechanical system? That's the, the black hawk. I think that's, a, that's a black hawk. Yep. Okay. So you're saying all of that will be removed? Yeah, the wood and staged stuff that's right in the middle of it behind the pole would get removed. You can see it very well in the picture right below. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not approved to have people up there. Correct. <laughs> uh, also part of this project, which isn't part of the petition at this time, is the desire to build a building in that a stub alley behind the building that's currently public right away that's going to go through a right away vacation. Um, so that will need to come back. Maybe we could even do it at, at the special meeting that we're going to discuss if we can do that. Otherwise, at the, um, the July meeting. Um, the regularly scheduled July meeting, hopefully, if we can get the info on that, as well as um, any signage, if you want to do that at that time. Sure. Okay. All right. Here also, go. Uh, Kyle Carter's here. Yeah. He, he can speak about the streetscaping, if you'd like. Okay. So, um, Hey, Dana, it's Look, are these planters? Are these planters included as part of your sort of office um, or is there not? We would not be able to do those. Of... Those are in public right away. That was just to dress up the renderings. <laughs> so as far as the streets go, goes, Dana, the south side of Second Street is what we have planned to do in the near future, not this side, but we would want to match it as soon as we can. Uh, this is a good example of one of the small holes still to fix in our in our streetscape strategy and that um, this isn't a multi-million dollar project, but it still needs better sidewalk. This would probably be a case like we do at Sippy's that we might do a band-aid in the meantime where there are, where the sidewalk is like literally, you know, a trip hazard where we patch that and come back to it. Uh, and redo the full streetscape later when we have the budget to do it. Unless the tax people at City Hall here want to lend me some more money to do it all at once. Um, that's probably where we're at. The planners belong to the partnership now. Um, 
I, the, the planners you guys have here look awesome and probably could be put in if, if we go through the process and, and get the right clearance, Dana. So if you like the way it looks, we can work with the uh, city staff on making sure clearance is there. That's the only issue. Mm -hmm. if you can build that as long as you got the, the, a better sidewalk. Thanks, Kyle. So I think DEP can maybe help with some of the patching um, in the meantime. I, we need to talk to the board about that as it's kind of the final gap in the streetscape ordinance right now. We, we have solutions for the big problems. This is one of the little ones that remains. So um, unless we can find more money to do the south side and north side at the same time, it's be a big budget jump. We might have to find a, a in-between uh, as a stop gap uh, with this side of the block. Okay. It seems like it would be nice for for everybody that um, the sidewalk, if, if they're redoing the, the sidewalk, then it gets tied into the patio as well. So it's all one contiguous slab or, you know, smooth and no, no steps or tripping hazards there. The curb is completely shot over here, and it still has entrances that were designed for when this was an auto uh, parts place. So there are lots of reasons to correct this sidewalk. Um, I, we would obviously need to work with Great River on the price tag of such an improvement, but I, I would agree that we need to explore a public-private partnership of some kind to help that cross the finish line, even if it's not full bore streetscape right now, as much as I would absolutely love to do that. Agreed. Okay. Any more discussion? Anybody have any other questions that they want to ask? I have two. Um, one is, looks like from the one of the last renderings, um, are you maintaining the beer tap fountain underneath yes. the mezzanine? Yes, we're maintaining that. As it is today? Yeah, we're going to maintain that as close to as it is now. And it's mainly because people like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then my second Thank you, question Deacon. I was going to ask that as well. Oh, um, my second question is about shade. Um, do you have any plans for shade structures, or are you planning to use umbrellas or anything? Have you given it that any thought? Outside of just the cover that the uh, deck provides, we have not planned for any other shade than potentially umbrellas. Okay, thank you. Great questions. Anybody else? All right, does anybody want to make a motion? I'll to approve. <laughs> All right, I think I heard a I think I heard a motion in a second. I'm not sure who it was, though. Uh, Danelle made the motion. Tegan came in after. Thank you very much. Any further discussion? All in favor. Is in there? I think I did. I, hear, I didn't hear any eyes. Aye. 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 <laughs> Opposed? <laughs> Motion carries. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Great to see this. Yeah. I appreciate it, and hopefully the next time we have a project come up, you will be actually here to <laughs> see it in person. Yeah. Okay, so do we need to go back to the first two, or yeah. is, did Andrew? Yeah, I'm here. I'm, I apologize. Yeah. I was 10 minutes late. My project's always at the end, typically, so I was banking on it. It yeah. was a bad sentence. So. Yeah, Andrew World is here. He's coming up. Uh, just a, a couple things. You, you know this building. It's been undergoing a number of incremental improvements. Uh, which sometimes, you know, incrementalism is the way that things get done. Um, there are vinyl windows that are proposed. The, uh, there's no restrictions against vinyl windows in the downtown, 
but you're looking for something that uh, is of quality, uh, is complementary to the building. Uh, one of the things here that Andrew and I had talked about, you'll see uh, in the uh, the photographs that the that there were originally arched windows in there, and he proposes to use the same method of uh, replacing um, with case or uh, double hung windows inside the existing arched frame, similar to what was done at uh, 246 West Third that we had talked about earlier. I think that's acceptable, but again, Andrew's here uh, for any additional information or if you have questions. Thank you, Matt. So just to understand that, so as we're looking at this photograph of the current building, can you go back to that? Yeah. There you go. So in that, um, it looks like the, the double hung windows and they are much shorter. So yeah. what you're describing now is that the, um, the, the window would actually be up inside that arch that and down correct. almost to the sill? Yes, yes. So those windows are actually vinyl windows in those spots. And what they did, it was cheaper to fur in around an existing opening and create kind of a metal gla or a glass Transom. In some cases, it's wood. They just filled it in with wood. Um, so I want to bring back that full visibility like we had on the Bird Building. It's a little further down. Andrew, I'm, I'm, Andrew, oh. I'm sorry to interrupt, but it's really just, hard to hear just you. Just face the center of the face table. Face the center. Okay, is this better? Actually, why don't you move to the middle? Middle, middle. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm not sure where <laughs> I'm talking to this. Or... Oh, no. The square. The square. Oh, hello. Okay. <laughs> better? This whole it's really awkward, I know. <laughs> no, it's okay. I'm sorry. It's new for me, too. Um, it's okay. Yeah, so I intend on, uh, so you're right about the windows. Uh, they're rectangular size windows, and they're right now. Uh, they're not the original windows. They're uh, vinyl replacement with storms in most of the cases right there. And what I intend on doing, for the front of the building, I want to do uh, full vinyl window replacement. It'll be black, so it's going to look really sharp, like really, really sharp. And we want to take the frame up into the arch, just like the Bird Building. That's the picture about uh, seven or eight slides down. That way, it looks mm -hmm. just like it looks. You can't tell from the street that it's actually an arched window. If we go arched, uh, the cost gets exponentially more expensive. Um, so, it, and it, we're getting the exact same effect. You, you cannot tell from the street when I bought the building. I didn't even realize they were. Uh, from the street, I couldn't even tell. Uh, and then Jim Thompson, he was here earlier. He's the one that actually did that when he bought the building uh, many years ago. So I looked at that and I'm like, this is exactly what I wanna do. And I wanna do this for the front, for the side and the back. I think I'm gonna reuse the existing openings they had cut in. But from the front, I'm really trying to create a wow factor for the front. So I'm gonna go with black windows in the front, uh, large rectangular frames to cover the, you know, that go up into the arcs and maybe I'm, Talking in a circle. I apologize. So. No, that I I, um, I think that's very very clearly described. Um, it does say in your um, uh, from the the quote from Gentech that it says white. It does. And it's going to be black. That's really glad to hear that because that was going to be my first comment. Was would you consider doing black because I think black would be it'll be um, black to the front and then I, white white to the sides. So you can't see the sides. And it's just part of a cost savings activity. So, because um, you, you can't see anything, the parking ramp is right there. But for, for the front of the building too, it's not in this, uh, in this, because we were told we didn't need it for design review, but we plan on doing uplighting, similar to what's on the current building, downtown Davenport. That'll change colors and it'll look sharp. So we'll do the black windows, the uplighting. We're doing a soffit, paint, we're gonna paint the soffit power wash, it'll be completely redone on the outside of the building. So it'll be pretty sharp. This is just something we need to help with. I'm glad to hear you're going with black also. All right. <laughs> black it is. And then white on the white on the side and the back since you can't see them. So but black on the front, 100%. Any additional discussion on this? 
Any questions? Is there a motion? I move to approve. Thank you, PJ. Thanks, Greg. I can see these guys on my my screen. That's why I know who is making those motions. All right. Further discussion. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Opposed. Motion carried. Super. Great. Thanks, Andrew. All on. right. So I think we have one more. Is that right? The awning. I walked Casey, in during the yeah. awning discussion. Um, I think Jim and his partner were here talking about that. Mine are always at the end. So I came in right in the middle of that. It's so funny. All right. So we're talking about awnings now, right? Yes, ma'am. And there was a very, very small gold stripe that kind of goes down the middle too. It will be striped, but it's a very subtle gold stripe. Um, he didn't put that in and I was upset. So it'll be a little more, it won't be so bland. It's a little bland right now, so. Are those windows also arched? On the bottom? Yeah. Yes, they are. Mm -hmm. So can I ask why you're, I mean, are the awnings what purpose are the awnings? What, hey, was, Andrew, um, just before, since you were part of the discussion, I believe that was it the building owner? No, 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 you're I'll the building the owner. owner. Yep. Um, Jim, right. Um, I think he was in the impression that you weren't going to do the awnings, so. Jim was in the impression? Was that was what was communicated before oh, you got in here. Nope, so. my building, I'm doing it. Okay. <laughs> um, no, I mean, it's, appreciate his input. He's All a great right. guy, but yeah. I'm, not doing an, I'm not doing an awning above the centerpiece where the signs okay. were. That's where the awnings on the, on the cornice, I guess you can call it, in the very front. Okay. So just to be design. clear, you're you're going to request that the that the board uh, make a determination on the awnings at this meeting. Very good. Yep. Okay. Exactly. All right. <laughs> very good. So you're asking us whether or not we like the awnings or not? I just want to know if we can get them approved. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make this building look sharp too. So. Uh, we're doing the uplighting with this building as well. We're, you know, we're helping Jim out with this bar there they're putting in. Um, we looked at the, uh, I guess you the round of the oval awnings. I didn't really care for that look. Um, and these are actually, uh, I, I like these because you can see the stripes better. That's the awning that's gonna get removed. That's the Jim, one that Jim wants removed so he can put his sign up. I was hoping he could put his sign above it. So really, I don't know, kind of hurts me on having the awning there, but. Um, I'm okay with just doing them on the side of the building. And the, we went with the longer ones. I, I just think it looks sharp. It kind of carries it, makes it look longer. But everybody's got their own idea, though. So. Well, I guess uh, I have a couple of comments. I mean, it's it really, I mean, it's covering up. I, if I remember correctly, these have a pretty arch. Yeah, they do. With some brick detail. Is that not right? Yeah, no, it's, now gets it's got, covered up. it's got arches on it. Yeah. I, I thought it would be kind of great too for just for coverage. Like if you're walking down the street too. Um, but you know, we're going to light the inside of the awnings as well. Um, I mean, we did, we do have, they gave us an example for arch ones too. Um, how many windows do we got? One, two, three, four, five. Is there a picture of the other side of the building as well or no? You can that. kind of see it on the doorway one. You can yeah. see to the left there. Okay, okay. Yeah, there's... Just kind of I think it. there's six or seven more windows there, too. Um, I, I guess I, I just don't know if you... I don't know I don't know that it really enhances the building. And then, the I mean, the other part of it that bothers me aesthetically is the, the awning to the left that has the one window by itself and then the two, you're kind of spanning across that vertical element. That's yeah. not a great detail to do that. So, I mean, you really- Well, especially if you're not gonna do it on both. Yeah, right. I mean, 
I mean, I guess I could go back to the curved ones, I guess. E either way, I, mean, I want to put awnings on the windows. Um, they'll be curved, the same color. Well, would there be an open for a suggestion if the awnings were further above the windows and had perhaps a artistic, um, I don't know, wrought iron or some sort of connector to the building, not necessarily the full support, but something that kind of made, made it look a little more um, incorporated. Okay. Um, I would consider doing the arc ones. I probably wouldn't consider doing the, like a wrought iron type element. Um, that sounds a little pricey, but the, the, the company in town, Sears Awnings, they've done multiple projects downtown. Um, they probably have some sort of a connector that's similar to that, that's not wrought iron. Um, that's like a pretty pricey suggestion. But I'm fine with doing the arcs. So we got pictures of the arced awnings. I just like these better, personally. Uh, but it's up to interpretation. They're nice, but they're just yeah. too low on the window. Gotcha, because right now, if you look at that building, if we took those awnings off, um, it almost looks like the building, when they did it, it looks like it's got kind of like a forehead above the window. It's really tall and it's just, Kind of bland. So I definitely want to do something with it for sure. Um, so if we can do the it uh, might be just sorry. pushing the awning up higher. Is that what, is that the suggestion of just pushing it up? Yeah. Yes, that's the suggestion. Yeah. Okay. Just, I, so you can see, but it reveals the um, the the yeah. arch of the window a little part of that detail. Be, it'd be interesting to see a graphic that showed that because I think that might be a good solution. But I still don't like. That one large what if, awning to the left. I agree with you there. If we took out, yeah, because it does look kind of funny on here. Um, what if we had that single window kind of singled out, and then we have uh, three awnings there instead of the two. So we have a single, a double, and it looks like a triple, and we raise them above the, uh, yeah. like the cornice piece and the brick. Then you can see all the detail. Does that seem like a good? Uh, it would be one continuous awning? No. No, uh, no it would be three. Uh, yeah. Three awnings, if we were starting from the left to the right, we'd have one single awning. Yes, but a, and then a is double. it possible to do a continuous awning? I don't think so. That would, that's kind of back to your point to where you got that, you know, the gap where you have awning over a gap. I think that would look even funnier. Um, I, I like whoever had the suggestion about uh, if you look at the awning on the left-hand side covering the three windows, if we did one single awning over the single window, a double over the double, and then we leave that triple on the far right-hand side, raise it up so you can see all the brickwork mm -hmm. and the detail work around it. Uh, I think that'd look mm -hmm. a little more appropriate. There you go. Yeah, I mean, I think that would be worth, worth considering. All right, yeah. yeah. Now we're talking. <laughs> So are you okay to come back to us with some more information on that? Yeah. Uh, how does this typically work? Can I get that information over to you, Dordo? I've got to wait till the next resign review board. I was trying to get these these guys going if I could. I just didn't know. I know we got to have approval. Um, so I can have them raise it so you can see all the detail work and take that section out. I'd be fine with that. So. Well, the board is going to be looking at uh, signage as well, so maybe it could be uh, included as part of that package or done at the same time. And to be honest, I, I, you know, I see a relationship between signage and awnings too. So that might be uh, a little easier to digest for the board. Okay. And I guess I, uh, and how did that, I guess, as far as timeline, because I could talk to my installer uh, and I could have them give me a rendering between now on Friday, I guess, if you want. So right now we yeah, I think you, go ahead, Dana. I think we're going to try to have another meeting. And it sounds like we have now maybe three people that have some urgency to want to get some answers from us. So I bet we'll maybe we can try to have another meeting even as soon as next week. I don't know. We'll have to talk to the board, but okay. I don't think you'll have to wait till the next regularly scheduled meeting for sure. Super. That sounds great. No, I like your suggestion too with raising it. Uh, I got a lot of projects going on right now. So uh, your input's appreciated. So, so we got a, looks like a better solution looks like. We appreciate your willingness to listen too. That's, that's, um, we like to try and 
be a team. <laughs> I'm pretty open-minded. You know, good, reasonable solutions are, yeah, I do appreciate it. We're good. Okay. So, so for now, I think we'll just table this until we get a little bit more information, if that's okay. Sounds great. Uh, who's going to be in touch regarding the, I guess, meeting? Would that be Matt? That would be me. Oh. I'll, I'll let you know, Andrew. Okay, perfect. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Thanks, Andrew. Yep, thank you. Have a good night. You too. All right, did Sydney come? Did he ever come in? Uh, no, he has not. So I think we have to table that one too, don't we? I didn't quite hear that. What? I think we have to oh, table. Oh, yeah, uh, I don't think there was a formal tabling. You're right. So I think we've covered everything. Anybody else have anything before we talk about a special meeting schedule? I have one staff update um, for the Hiller building at 314 Gain Street. Um, there is going to be some emergency work to stabilize the building here pretty soon. Just wanted to inform the board that that will be happening and, and likely there might be some fencing, temporary fencing put up around the building as well. Um, but um, I did inform the um, alderman with McGinnis that's working with that client that um, once they have their design that it would need to come before the board. Great, thank you so much. Did somebody buy that? Um, there, there's an option to buy on it right now. Okay, good. So it's that parapet on the left, it's um, tipping and it's a, a, mm -hmm. a fall hazard. The, the whole wall itself, thanks. So the whole su southern wall. Oh my. Yeah, you can kind That's of see bad. it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Looks bad. Not good. <laughs> so I know, um, I know some of you guys, some of you staff people today were getting some um, urgent requests to have a special well, first to try to squeeze another project into today and, um, you know, because of the open meeting law, we can't do that. And um, I, my, here's my concern. I feel like it just seems like we're constantly adding special meetings because people can't seem to figure out the fact that they need to come in front of us. Now, the two today, I think, are a little bit different because there were some other extenuating circumstances. But um, I just don't want, as much as we can, I just don't want us to have to try and, I mean, we're all a bunch of busy volunteers to try and drop everything to have another special meeting because of somebody else's lack of planning. I agree. So, I mean, that's my, my soapbox. Um, that <clears throat> said, you know, we've tried really hard to be flexible. We sure as heck don't want it to just you know, discourage anybody from getting a project done, but I also don't want it to be, um, you know, just kind of an expectation that if you need it, you can get a special meeting just because you forgot to come and get your stuff submitted. So, that said, <laughs> how do you feel about another special meeting? <laughs> Dana, this just seems to be coming commonplace. And I mean, if that's what we want it to be, we can all decide that. But you know, all these other boards operate fairly rigid schedules, and they seem to do quite well. Right, I agree. I can say, so I can say I came on oh, in I January, see. end of January, I think. Um, and I think there's been like four special uh, meetings. So I, I totally echo your sentiment. Um, I'm wondering, is there, I don't know how this works really with the city to, to review, like if we had meetings every three weeks or, or something like that, is that something that's been done in the past? If there's a need for more frequent meetings? I don't think it's frequency. It's just a matter of people being able to hit deadlines. Oh, 
is that the issue? Okay, I'm relatively new, so um, I don't know if there's just more volume, if it's like there's too much volume, or it's like you're saying people don't have the personal accountability to get their things in on time, then um, that's another issue. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I think it seems to be some of the same offenders. And they know. <laughs> <laughs> so um I, I completely respect that and I I personally agree with you. I think that this is something that it, it's out there. Um everybody should know when the meetings are held and, and staff is willing to work with people if we know about projects upcoming and we try to be flexible on our end too. And to Dana's point, you know, we are a volunteer board, but we are also largely a board of professional persons. Right. Amen. <laughs> okay. So, um, can we, I mean, can we take a vote? How do we, what's the best approach for this staff people? What do you, I, do you need us to do? I, I think it, I think it's up to the chair's discretion to to call a special meeting. My suggestion would be rather than just say okay, let's meet next week. If you if you said let's let's put it off for two weeks, July seventh. There's a, I'd say a better chance that maybe some new items come on the agenda, perhaps leading to a cancellation of the regular July meeting. That really hasn't happened a whole lot. But just back to the whole question of, of workload and whatnot, and I mean, this goes with the territory. It's, it's very difficult to predict. We miss, we, we uh, sometimes don't have meetings. And then here tonight, we have six things on the agenda. We probably could have had a couple more. So I think just trying real hard, continuing to try to get into a, get into a schedule where, um, you're meeting we're meeting once a month and we stick to that as is, is is a goal but i my suggestion would be to if you choose to have if you choose to have a special meeting maybe go for july 7th rather than june 29th so to your question dane i don't think there needs to be a vote i think you can just say no okay <laughs> <laughs> One is uh, and what the majority feels. So um, I'd just like to say that I, I think we've halfway promised for a special meeting coming up. And maybe it's after that that we say no. Dana, yeah, good point. I can come out. Do you want to do a, like a roll call, like an informal roll call vote to get an idea of what people are thinking? I think that would be helpful to okay. everybody um, here. And I guess I think, you know, and, and I think I got ahead of myself a little bit by, you know, bringing it up. But I, I guess I, it, it seemed like there were so many urgent things right now in front of us that I thought, well, maybe we don't want to wait, make them all wait. But I agree with PJ. Then it's like from now on, letter of the law, you know, I mean, plenty of zoning doesn't have special meetings. Other groups that do not have special meetings just because, you know, some random person can't get their act together. Um, I mean, the, the, the people that, the majority of the people that own property or are developing property in our downtown have been through this drill multiple times. They, they know the time frame and they know that they have to do it. They still show up and say, well, can you just trust me that <laughs> this is going to look like, yeah, that's not going to work. <laughs> so um, I guess that's a long-winded way to say, how about this? How about if, if yeah, if we do a roll call and um, the question is, should we go ahead and have a special meeting to address three other issues? And, um, and then should that be, I guess, the... Um, when should that be? Should that be next week or should that be in two weeks, knowing that we'll have another meeting potentially two weeks after that? So could everybody just kind of maybe, as, as your name gets called, kind of voice your opinion and I'll keep track. 
How about that? We, the right. top of the list? Yeah. I don't you guys have a list? Been memorized, I don't know. So I, I wasn't quite catching that. Somebody's dog was barking. Uh, <laughs> but so you want a uh, you want a roll call? Basically, okay, uh, Wilkinson. So I would vote to have another special meeting uh, next week. Is the fourth, isn't it? I, I would do Matt's suggestion of, of my, maybe do the the seventh. And I, I guess I, it's the six. Sorry, it's the six. Sorry, um, and and I'll have to confirm a place that we can do that. I, I mean, the nice thing is, is we can do virtual meetings right now. So if I can't find, if council chamber, chambers isn't available, then we can just do it virtual um, and and have a different building available. So I that, guess that gives us three. Isn't our next meeting then on the twenty seventh? Correct. Of July. Looks like it. Yeah, okay. So special meeting on July 6th, I say yes. And then okay. we can purchase. You want to go down the list? Yeah, please. Lundgren. I would say special meeting on the 6th. Thereafter, just say no. Tree, trees. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, I agree. Uh, one additional special meeting and no additional, no extra meeting thereafter. Slobodzian. Same. Ration? Same. Okay. Bass? I thought we might have lost him. Kavapo. Agreed. Warden. And everyone else. <laughs> and Salzer. It was everyone else. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thanks, you guys. Thank you very much. So, all right, we will go for it and um, with a stern warning <laughs> to the offenders. Duly noted. <laughs> This and and last yeah. <laughs> and maybe Matt's right. Maybe this will take care of the July business, and uh, we might be able to cancel the the regularly scheduled meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so one last question, Dina. Has our pocket park friend from the village applied for a permit, or has has he approached the council for a special a special hearing? Good yes. question. Yes, he has. And um, that went to the council, um, I believe, the, the first meeting in, in uh, June. And the, uh, the yes, and we should, I should have put that in ex other business, but the city council did overturn your decision and uh, allows, allowed that petitioner to move forward with his, the design he presented, but did not want to discuss with the board. Of course, I'm not surprised. So you can tell city council, thanks a lot. Yes. <laughs> uh, I will just say, I believe that's, that may be the, the only case to be appealed to uh, council that the DRB has done and given, you know, 12 years of history and hundreds, if not a thousand cases, I think you guys are doing pretty good. Well, we had the issue with the TV sign up at the corner of Brady and uh, Lopez that we got overturned. Not that, that's right. A long time ago. A long time ago. Well, that's unfortunate. I thought we made a pretty good deal. Well, I would say feel free to write the council a letter about your feelings. I think we'll do that. I think we all should do that. I am fully intending to do that myself. <laughs> they expect us to act as volunteers and uh, do the best we can, and then to get our legs cut out from under us does not feel very good. Just saying. I agree 100%. <clears throat> oh, 
All right, you guys, on that note, I got to run to another meeting. So um, anything else we need to talk about? Okay, thanks everybody so much. Thank you, staff. Thank you, board members, for all your work and, and participation. And we'll uh, see you in a couple weeks. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you. Thanks. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Bye bye. Who owned it? It was a uh, doctor. Is Joe Dave still? No, they sold it to John White. No, that's who he got. Right. Okay, that's right. Yeah.